This right here is the brand new Tamiya BBX. And it is brand new. It's not a re-release of anything. It's a brand new buggy. From what I've seen, Tamiya have actually upped their game on this one. And we'll speak about that a little bit more in a minute, but they've gone with the times and we're in 2023 now and not still in the 80s. That is a really nice picture there. I pre-ordered this back in April and this isn't the one I pre-ordered. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you that are watching that have pre-ordered one of these, you haven't got your pre-order yet either. Yet again, we've got a brand new release. It's been hyped up like crazy and there's not enough to go around at the moment. It's not just Tamiya, this is quite common across most of the hobby that seems like when we see a new release, it's six months before anyone really gets one. I got really lucky. I was on my Facebook page and one of the pages I follow, MB Models, that's where I went to practice some buggy racing for a YouTuber race. They posted a picture of one and it said, we've got one of these in stock, be quick. And I can do quick, according to my wife, from the time of their post to me actually buying this was about three minutes. I'd like to say that as a record for me, but it's probably not. <laughs> so here we are with, well, a BBX build. And if you follow the channel, you'll probably know I'm not really gonna build this how it's meant to be built. This is gonna be slightly different. So before I start building, two things and two things that Tamiya's don't usually cut, well, maybe three things. First of all, we've got bearings in a Tamiya kit. Secondly, we've got oil shocks, alloy bodied oil shocks. And the third, and probably one of the most advanced things for Tamiya, we've got hex hardware. Yes. Right, let's build this thing. I just want to share this moment with you. The first ever bit of Hex hardware going into a new build Tamiya. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> nice, silky smooth gearbox. Very nice. Right, gearbox all complete. Let's talk about the motor. Now, I put a little community post up with a poll on there. What you wanted me to do with this. Box art shelf queen. Box art mild brushless and cherish it and drive it carefully or non-box art overpower it and send it not at the skate park and i also put i don't care you suck nine percent nine percent yeah and for that nine percent thank you i like your humor but currently as i'm looking at it it's got 1500 votes and it's 44 percent for box art drive it carefully cherish it and then there's 39 percent for overpower it send it non-box art well i'm gonna compromise <laughs> I've got a censored motor, so nice and smooth. However, it is 7,700 kV. That's a good compromise. Smooth, good quality motor and a little bit fast. And it's gonna be paired up to a Copperhead 10, which is a really nice ESC from Castle. I'm gonna try and refrain from sending it too hard, but this is gonna give it a nice amount of power. Right, time to mount the gearbox on the chassis and then I think we're on to the steering bit. So going well so far. So servo time, we are running an e-tronics. This is the ET2060. I'll put the specs up so you can see. Nice fast servos, not that expensive either. Oh, I just realized you need a low profile servo. Panic over, <laughs> I've got a low profile one, luckily. Got a little short lead on it, but we'll just have to put an extension on that, but that's better. So we're at the tricky part now. So we've established I needed a low profile servo, but it also recommends a small ESC. 
and receiver. The copperhead's quite big. It does fit on there, but I'm not sure the cover's gonna go over it, so we'll have to maybe leave that off. If I can switch that around, I might be able to turn it 90 degrees. Leaving it open on there would probably look quite good. So we've got to mount that on there. Motor leads are way too long, so we're gonna cut them down. Gonna make it nice and neat. Savox servo fits perfectly in there. Build so far, it's really nice, really nice build. And one of the things that makes it a nicer build is just the hardware. So much nicer being hex hardware. I think that's helping with how this build feels. So we're all in. Don't look at my soldering. Neatly tucked the motor cables away there. Now we've just got to sort out this mess. Shocks to build and then, well, there's not much more left. The front and rear axles, suspension. Should have a functional chassis, well, very soon. I never used to be a fan of building shocks. More recently, I've kind of quite enjoyed it. Little tip so you don't lose your circlip. Just put your fingers, don't put them too close because you'll get them caught, but push it like that and then it doesn't ping off. Yeah, I always found them a bit fiddly, a bit messy with the oil and stuff, whereas, whereas now, it's quite satisfying building a good shock, especially when your Eclipse go in first time. Doesn't tell you to use this, but more recently I've been using O-ring grease. Stops your O-rings from drying out. Nothing worse than dry O-rings. So these have a little bleed cap on them, which is really good. You just have to make a one mil hole inside because it's not ready made, but this makes it so much easier to make sure that they're uh, set up properly. Adjustable collars, nice little touch, means you can uh, adjust your ride height and stuff. I'll set them up properly when they're on the car, but that is a good shock, that feels nice. And here's the other three that I made earlier. suspension it feels really nice may need to tune it when it's rolling and when we got a bit of weight from the battery in it but so far feels good now i've just finished the driver and i'm not a fan of well i'm not a fan of painting these especially the detail in there uh, and i just well i don't know i just don't like them So we've gone a bit more realistic i'd like to tell you who he is but i can't remember this dude this is it's his other face, but it fits on there perfectly and it looks absolutely awesome. So I've painted it, not great, but from a distance. Once it's got all the panels on and the mesh on there, what are you gonna see? Is his face in there, that looks so good. So, so good. This is such a nice build. And we're nearing the end. Done all the cage, done all that bit. Wheels and tires. You know I always like to share, share moments like this with you. The tire sniff. Oh, they're good ones. They are. That is a good tire smell. Rough ride tires. There's your front ones. Foams with these as well. And nice chrome wheels. Tire size is different, but the wheels, the wheels I think are the same. It's finished. Are you ready to see it? Are you ready? Look at that. I am so pleased with how it's come out. It looks so good. That green complements the colours of the stickers really well. I picked out three different greens. I ended up going with a PS21. Don't know if I should have gone for the slightly brighter eight. That's light green. We went for park green in the end. Obviously red, orange, yellow next in line is green. So I thought it would definitely work with the stickers. A little bit of chalk paint on the wheels. It's not perfect. It does smudge a little bit, but it easily comes off with a little bit of water. Copper head in there looks good, doesn't it? It looks good like that. Tuck the wires out of the way a little bit. There we go. Does look good. And then driver in there. I should have. Instantly, as soon as I started the first coat of the green, I realised that should have been white, but 
I don't think it looks too bad. I've just put these lights on. You can put lights on the front, lights across the top. Such a nice build. I like the Velcro as well. This just comes off like that. And then you access the battery little pin that slides out from there. And then you lift that up a little bit. Out comes the battery. So nice to build. Probably one of the nicest Tamiya builds I've done. I don't mean nice by how it looks. It does look nice. I mean just how it builds. You know, the quality, the, the plastics feel really good. The hardware is really good. The suspension feels really good as well. So two cell, the ESC will take up to four, but I don't want to kill it straight away. Um, I'm going to show you how smooth this sensor motor is. Let me show the steering first. It's got quite a nice steering angle on it. I've adjusted the end points. It's about as far as it can go before it starts um, binding up, but nice quick steering. And listen to how smooth this setup is. So smooth. Bit of full throttle. <laughs> so a lot of you guys in the comments have been saying that oh it's going to destroy it and stuff this castle motor on two cell with the stock gear in i'd say that's you know that's quite nice right here we go first run take it slow at first well they saying that oh i don't need to that's nice that is smooth Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure when I was building this summer you were going 7,700 kV. But look at it. Spawn. It drives really well. It handles so nice. Just slides. Slides around that corner. This is really loose like sort of fine gravel and dirt. But that. Yes. Bit overgrown here now but i think my diff might need tightening feels like on full throttle it's losing a bit of power yeah i think my diff might need tightening got a nice bit of speed about it let's go tighten that diff nice quick fix just hadn't done the diff properly Some short grass, that's better. <laughs> oh, this thing's so good. How many times have I said that now? Anyone think I'm shilling Tamiya where I'm not? This thing is just loads of fun. Can't believe how well that motor's behaving. I mean, I thought it might be a little bit crazy as well. It's working well with that gear in. Probably not the best color for running on grass. <laughs> Definitely hooks up well. I think we popped a little wheelie there. I'm gonna lift them front wheels. Yes, <laughs> nice. Hit that too hard, it's gonna send it uh, a bit too crazy, I think. I say handling out the box is pretty spot on. That's shock oils out the box. Kind of set the spring positions how it shows you as well. Oh, I think my pinions come off. And it's all fixed. So it's just the pinion that came loose. Bit of a pain to get access to it. You have to take all this off and lift it up. Well, I say it's a pain. It's not like crazy, but you just have to take it apart a little bit to get access in there. All back together, first run. Love it, absolutely love it. What a, what a machine Tamiya have built. Don't panic if I haven't covered everything for you in this video. I've got a few more planned. I've already got some paddle tires lined up for it. And we didn't do a speed run. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is, well, usually the speed runs are done on the road. And what I didn't want to do was trash it before I'd even taken it off-road because it is an off-road buggy. And secondly, I want to do more than one speed run. I want to do it 2S, 3S. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do 4S. Also want to try some different gearing and stuff. So I will do a separate speed run video. And this is probably going to be a bit of a bold statement and I'm sure people will not agree with me, but I reckon this is the best off-road buggy that Tamiya have produced in 
well, probably 40 years. Let's have some more brand new stuff coming out, please, Tamiya. Yeah?